This is Dr. Lam. The signs and symptoms of adrenal fatigue are wide and varied. Uh, many people approach their doctor's office uh, complaining of fatigue and lethargy. This is very common. But many of them also has accompanying signs that is difficult to identify or understand. And these can include things like hypoglycemia, low body temperature, palpitation, unexplained hair losses, constipation with diarrhea, a reduced sex drive, lightheadedness, and the reduced energy in morning despite having a good night's rest. Usually many doctors, uh, especially those conventionally trained are quite confused and lost to understand what is going on because the symptoms seems to be so convoluted and so massive. A complete workup is usually done and if that fails to give you any idea then it may be wise to consider adrenal fatigue as one of the causes. Adrenal glands sits on top of the kidney and is responsible for to control the stress that we deal with in our life. When the stress overwhelms our body's ability to handle it, then the adrenal glands become dysfunctional and arises a condition called adrenal fatigue. This is very different from a medical condition called Addison's disease, where the body is actually in a very, very low state of function because of deficient and malfunctioning adrenal glands. So the adrenal fatigue is really a subclinical and a state before you get to Addison's disease and most conventional medical doctors are not really fully knowledgeable on that. Let's take a step back to understand that in the adrenal glands as you can see here uh, many hormones are made including pranilolone, progesterone, DHEA, cortisol, the family of estrogen as well as androgens. Now among these the most important is cortisol. Cortisol is a wonderful hormone. It helps us to deal with stress. It, at the same time, it has a dark side uh, because it also causes the muscle breaks down and it causes a lot of other problems when it is not well balanced. And it is this cortisol uh, irregularity that causes many of the symptoms and ensuing responses that give rise to many, many symptoms. While the most common causes of adrenal fatigue and the triggers are stress either on a physical or emotional basis, there are many other conditions that we have in life that can also trigger this, including chronic illnesses of many kinds, chronic infections, chronic pain, depression, gluten intolerance, malabsorption syndromes, toxic exposure to chemical sensitivities, surgeries, sleep deprivation, over-exercise, over-sugar in the diet. These are all triggers of adrenal fatigue. As you can see here, uh, during adrenal fatigue, the first the cortisol level starts to go up as the adrenal tries to pull out more cortisol to deal with stress. But after a while, it starts going down because it's kind of already maxed out. And when it starts going down, then the adrenal fatigue progresses into further stages. Other precursor hormones such as DHEA as well as pranilolone also experience similar declining uh, curve as the adrenal fatigue progresses. Uh, there are four stages to adrenal fatigue. Stage one is alarm reaction or the fight or flight response. At this stage, most people don't feel it is asymptomatic. The body basically needs uh, to have more cortisol. It makes more cortisol because it has the reserve and it deals with the stress of life and then you move on. And um, you may be a little tired and then you just uh, have a little coffee drink or a little uh, donut and you will be able to continue on. Stage 2 is called resistance response and that is when anxiety starts to set in, you become more irritable, insomnia becomes more common, it's more difficult to fall asleep, there's also becoming more uh, easy to get infections, women can get PMS and menstrual irregularities and this is where the body still needs a little bit more than it's able to handle and it starts to decompensate. The cortisol output is reaches its maximum and there's occasional mild fatigue, something that a nap or a vacation can take care of and therefore in stage one and stage two, uh, most people don't even realize how severe it is and seems to uh, do quite well. If this is not taken care of, then the body enters stage three of what we call adrenal exhaustion. In adrenal exhaustion, there are four phases, and as you progress through the phase A through D, the situation becomes worse. This is usually the first time that the patient would see their doctor. Unfortunately, most doctors would either uh, give them thyroid medication or antidepressants or send them home to relax. The intensive workup usually done at this point and uh, usually become a negative.
Okay, uh, stage 3b is characterized by the ovarian adrenal thyroid axis imbalance where there's a concurrent hypothyroidism that's subclinical, concurrent uh, estrogen dominance as well as adrenal fatigue. And if this does not get better, then stage 3c becomes the prominent, which is a disequilibrium state. And this is when the body really goes into alert, uh, full alert, and the autonomic nervous system is uh, activated. At this time, the adrenaline is flooded through the body and there are many, many the symptoms such as palpitations and undesirable symptoms that can cause the person to really decompensate and feel really bad. Many are not able to get up for a long time and have to be bedridden to a certain degree and not able to start holding a job full time. Uh, if that is not uh, taken care of, then ultimately the adrenal fatigue uh, goes into a failure stage and that can become a medical emergency and the person is in bad state. Here's a graph of a typical adrenal fatigue progression. As you can see here, it's a gradual decline. The timing here uh, actually can vary from, from months to years. But if the person basically go through various stages of stage one, and then go into stage two, and gradually become more symptomatic, and then come back, and then as things uh, hit, they get worse and worse and worse over time. Unfortunately, conventional medicine miss adrenal fatigue because the diagnosis criteria are really set for Addison's disease and does not pick up subclinical problems. So that is the issue. A saliva test can be useful, but at this time, the clinical correlation needs to be very well looked into uh, because sometimes the clinical correlation is not very clear as well. If you just take one snapshot, it's usually not very indicative and it's very hard to interpret. So laboratory is not a very, very good uh, diagnostic criteria. And the most important is to find somebody who knows adrenal fatigue to take a detailed history because the history will tell the story. One of the reasons why uh, adrenal fatigue is so confusing is because there's a lot of paradoxical reactions or reactions that you don't think should happen, but it actually happens that defy conventional uh, medical knowledge. And here's a list of some of them here, as you can see, uh, such as fluctuating blood pressure, uh, when medicine is given, it's supposed to get better, but they get worse. Uh, so these are all issues that are very common that you see in adrenal fatigue. Women in particular are more affected, especially with the ovarian adrenal thyroid axis imbalance and its characteristics of stage 3b. Because in the woman, these three hormonal glands form a triad and imbalance of one can lead to the imbalance of the other ones. So a lot of times you have a woman come in with symptoms of estrogen dominance, clinical uh, hypothyroidism, as well as uh, adrenal fatigue, all presenting in a convoluted picture. The key, of course, is to deal with the cortisol, because once the cortisol is dealt with, then all the other organs usually fall into place, especially the thyroid as well as the ovarian system. Recovery from adrenal fatigue requires a total body approach using lifestyles, dietary exercises, and nutritional supplements. Some of the tips include the removal of the stresses, uh, sleep before 10 p.m. is the best, avoid coffee and caffeine beverages, avoid TV, computers, and anything that can drain you unnecessarily. Exercises should be titrated in accordance with the body's needs uh, so that you don't get overly uh, drained. Uh, starting with adrenal breathing exercise, then move on to adrenal restorative exercises. Then you can rebuild the body from internal outwards with adrenal yoga exercises to match the body's uh, needs. Nutritional supplementations uh, include many, many. Uh, the arsenal can include uh, vitamins, uh, uh, minerals, uh, uh, herbs, uh, glandulars, and hormones. And the key is to be able to have the right kind of supplement de de uh, delivered properly. One of the dangers of uh, self-navigation is, is the widespread use of shotgun approach, employing a lot of different nutritional support uh, without uh, consideration. And this is a common mistake. Diet considerations including uh, eating breakfast well, uh, eat more than uh, three meals a day, avoid grains as well as sugar. The three most common mistakes in adrenal recovery is uh, improper use of nutritional supplements, inexperienced healthcare provider, and excessive use of prescription drugs. As you can see, adrenal fatigue is a complicated condition, and the more serious it is is when the more advanced uh, adrenal state weakness occurs. A total body approach to recovery is possible, and many people do get better. The key is to have the right practitioners. I hope this article has been helpful to you. The entire article can be read free of charge at my website, www.drlam.com. If you have any questions, you can ask me there at my website. Or if you need personalized attention, you can call my office.